Good morning and welcome to the MNT News Special, the Boston Photographs Revisited. I'm Tiari. Hi, I'm Mango Chan. Thank you for joining us this morning in visiting a popular story from our news board, the Boston Photographs. On July 22, 1975, a fire broke out in a building on Marlboro Street, Boston. When firefighters arrived, there was a woman, Diana Bryant, and a young child, Tiari Jones, trapped on the fire escape. Stanley Foreman, a photojournalist of the Boston Herald American, was in the area taking pictures of the rescue with his rare motor-driven Nikon F camera, which took three frames per second, a speed that was almost unheard of at the time. While waiting for radio, the fire escape began to buckle underneath the young woman and her goddaughter. Bob Oni, a fireman. On the scale, let's go of the pair and verbs. The fire letters, just as the fire scales gave way, the mother managed to get onto her nest, but soon lost grace and too fair. Five story to what was certainly be their death. Amazingly, the young child landed on the woman's back and survived. She was treated at New England Medical Center and recovered fairly quickly. In the photo, she is given the attention of nurse Donna Turpin during her stay at the hospital. She continues to grow up knowing of the incident and the woman that essentially saved her life. This is impossible to know how the photo would affect her as she go up, but this charging incident will always be a part of her life. Next, we visit Nicole Comfort as she interviews the photographer himself, Stanley Foreman. I'm here with the photographer himself, Stanley Foreman. He was only 30 when he captured the photos that promoted inspection of fire escapes throughout Boston and won him the Pulitzer Prize in 1976. So Stanley, what was your business in the city that day? Well, since early that morning, I had been all over Boston trying to capture photos of the skyline for my Sunday feature. So how did you hear about the fire? I was turning in my film to the paper and a call came in that there was a fire in an old Victorian house. So I headed there as soon as I could. Oh, why did you head to the fire and what did you hope to find there? I heard that there may be people trapped in the building, so I went there to capture the crucial moments of the heroic rescue. When you arrived at the scene, what did you see? I saw a woman and a young child on the fifth floor of fire escape with a firefighter. It appeared as if they were just about to be rescued. When did things start to go south? The firefighter was just reaching for the ladder and asking the woman to hand her the child when the fire escape began to buckle. The firefighter grabbed onto the ladder and was safe, but uh, the woman and child slipped off the fire escape and began to fall. What were you doing as this was happening? I don't know. Everything started falling. I followed the girl down taking pictures. I took three or four frames and I realized what was going on. And I completely turned around because I didn't want to see her hit. At the time, did you know of the controversy that would surround these photos? At the time, I didn't know that the picture was going to be so big or have such an impact. When they say a picture tells a thousand words, these certainly told 10,000. Thanks, Stanley. Back to you, Mango and Tiare. Thank you, Nicole. And now to Gail Small in Opinions. Well, photojournalism is about exhibiting images to give a story a better explanation. The Boston Photographs has been widely criticized as unethical journalism, but what I have here to say is that it actually paved the way for better fire security. That's the truth none can deny. Had it not been the faulty fire escape and the death of Diana Bryant, it could have made a heroic story. People's perception differs with death. It's obvious because we are not numb. However, I believe there's nothing wrong in letting people know how the incident occurred and what would, could have been done to avoid such circumstances. Thank you, Bill. And now to Errol in Opposing Opinions. The Boston photographs are indeed tragic pictures, and I don't think they should have been published at all. I don't know what the photographer was thinking at the time he took those pictures. From what I understand, these pictures invade Diana's privacy. If I were her, I wouldn't want my death to be published on national news. My family and friends would be agonized by the painful memories triggered by these pictures. I know that different editors in different newspapers have their own viewpoints. 
they describe these pictures as interesting, riveting, and gripping. To me, the pictures depict cheap sensationalism. Newspapers make profits through the distribution of such pictures to other newspapers. The editors must have thought of this as a way to spark the interest of readers to raise their profits. As a reader, I feel this shirt. The woman and the child look scared when they were falling. The newspapers claim that they want to promote better fire escape measures through these pictures and improve slum life. These pictures don't do that at all. They're just making excuses. The only fire escapes that were inspected and improved were those in Boston. It did not encourage a nationwide movement to strengthen all fire escapes. These pictures don't even show life in the ghetto. The pictures were taken in Back Bay section of Boston, which is a wealthy district in Boston today. Thank you, Aaron. And thank you for joining us this morning. Have a good day.